Rise and Shine. Welcome back to Rise and Shine. And as promised, we are having the guest session right now on the program. So uh, if you see it around Colombo and also around the country, you see a lot of development happening, a lot of infrastructure is being blooming and uh, sort of so many uh, structures are coming up in Colombo itself and to, make, to, uh, to serve different purposes. And today we're going to talk about the most uh, publicly known and one of the most uh, popularly uh, talked about topic in the uh, in transport tech sec sec sector. I'm sorry. Uh, this is about the Colombo ri Light Rail uh, Transit Project. And to, dis to discuss, discuss about this, we have uh, Mr. Chamindari Dasa joining with us uh, from the, uh, uh, this project. And he's the project director uh, of this concept. And good morning to you, Mr. Good Adelson. morning to you. Yeah, so we'll to. talk about the concept first as to, for those who don't know about this project, what is the LRT project? Actually, the LRT, uh, by its uh, the, the, uh, the simple meaning, mm -hmm. is the light rail. So we know that we have the experience of heavy, ra heavy uh, trains in the country, as well as in the region we have the metros, uh, monorails, and uh, light rails. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a, a train which is in light weight mm -hmm. and uh, it runs uh, uh, using electricity no 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 full combustion is there mm -hmm. so it's zero emission okay. so uh, the very purpose is that to serve more people in a given time what's the advantage of moving from heavy to uh, the lrt system actually it depends on the uh, the area that you are going to select if you have a free space you can go for a heavy uh, train mm -hmm. and at the same time the the amount of people that you want to carry mm -hmm. so if you consider the urban uh, area like Malabe, Bataramulla or, or the very congested areas we cannot go for a heavy train because mm -hmm. it emits uh, fumes like carbon dioxide carbon uh, monoxide light but this okay. is a, a electric electricity driven uh, train uh, and uh, Without taking the, the private lands for the expansion of the roads, we can take it uh, elevated. So the whole structure in this uh, project is elevated, including its uh, depot area. Okay. Right. right. Let's talk about the destination and the, uh, the, the points that we connect with this project. It's, I heard it's from Colombo to Batramulla. And there are some other, uh, in, the, in the middle, there are some dots that we can as well. Can we talk yeah. about the project? Uh, actually, now, uh, before that, I think uh, we should understand why we have selected this corridor. Okay. There are seven corridors coming to Colombo, mm -hmm. where we have, in the recent study, we have uh, experienced that uh, the most congested corridor is the Malabe corridor, uh, because of, especially because of the administrative city coming into uh, Bataramulla area. Mm -hmm. So that is why this uh, particular corridor has been selected for a light rail system. Mm -hmm. So uh, to start with, we have the uh, depot coming in front of the Cinec campus where we need uh, about 50 acres of land. Okay. Uh, so it's a paddy area, uh, actually it's a wetland. Okay. So we are not going to disturb the wetland uh, and the retention capacity of it. So uh, from the starting point of the depot, the total structure is elevated. So it starts from there at the depot okay. where we have the parking, we have the heavy maintenance, light maintenance light. Mm -hmm. So from there it starts and we ha will have the first uh, station in front of uh, Chandrika Kumar Tunga Mavata in Pittugala. Mm -hmm. So the next station is at Malabe. Likewise, we have 16 stations all on the trace. Okay. Uh, Malabe, Talahena, Koswata, then Densil Kompagadu Mavata. Then we'll have another one at Palantuna Junction, mm -hmm. then Bataramula Junction. Mm -hmm. Then we have another one behind Setsiri Paya Stage 3, a uh, new building coming there. Okay. And uh, in front of HSBC building Rajakiriya. Then we have another station connecting uh, many la many uh, road corridors, that mm -hmm. is in Rajakiriya Junction. Right. Then Kota Road, Borella. Then we have very important station at uh, Lipton circle mm -hmm. where it will have the uh, connectivity for pedestrian to have uh, access to the general hospital mm -hmm. and then we have the another station at uh, Garmin Hall Junction mm -hmm. uh, and next one is behind the Tripoli uh, that is for PETA mm -hmm. then uh, the last stop will be at the multimodal transport hub which is proposed at the uh, Fort Railway station so that is the destination so when you, when, you, when you say a multiple transportation hub, it, that means uh, even the trains and the buses, and this also connects in the same building. Correct. Oh, Correct. Right. It's, it's a complex. It's a complex. 
where I, we can get the, the trains coming uh, from all over the country and uh, the buses. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a transport hub. Hub. Yeah. Okay. I believe the financial assistance for a project of this nature can be vast yeah. uh, because we're looking at 16 stations and yeah. it's as some of the primary spots mm. of okay. Colombo. Yeah. Uh, so what sort of, uh, I, I understand the Ministry of Megapolis is behind this, yeah. uh, but how do we get the supported financial Actually, funds? Actually, uh, now starting from the feasibility, uh, yeah. this has been financed by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, we call it JICA. JICA. Yeah. So they did the feasibility study and uh, we have found that it is economically viable project. So uh, the financing for the project, uh, which is estimated at 1.7 billion US, mm -hmm. is going to be financed from the uh, JICA. But uh, uh, in terms of the land acquisition and the compensation for the affected people for the project, so we have to bear the cost from <coughs> our government. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, with the foreign exchange rate uh, conversions and, and the changes, uh, now it has become 1.85 million billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. So that is the portion that we are uh, getting from the JICA. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the most important part of this is the interest rate. Mm -hmm. uh, the interest rate for this loan is 0.1% per annum. Okay. And uh, for the consultancy that we are going to invest through this loan, uh, the interest rate is 0 0.01. Right. At the same time, we have a 12 years grace period, mm -hmm. and the repayment uh, period is 40 years. Mm -hmm. So, so it's 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 a it's a very it's a concessionary massive. loan mm -hmm. where a government like ours uh, will find it difficult to invest such a huge amount for a project like this. So it's a very concessionary loan, so we should get the benefit out of it. When are we planning to complete the overall project? Actually now uh, we got the cabinet approval for the signing of the loan. And by this time we have already uh, completed the procurement of the consultants because we, we should have the technology and the consultancy services. Uh, this is a tied loan, so the consultancies as well as the construction or the supplies, the material, uh, material in the sense uh, uh, the train mm -hmm. we have to purchase from Japan. It's a tied loan, so 30% of the loan amount we have to spend on procuring things from Japanese mm -hmm. Japan. Okay, uh, we can also speak about the facilities now when it comes to a train like this in Colombo. Yeah. Uh, and also, realistically speaking, now the train service that we already have in place in the country is uh, it's not that, I mean, I mean uh, it just serves the purpose, but yeah. I guess we're not that comfortable, I would say. Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you, what kind of a benefit and a facility will the public receive out of this? Uh, actually, unlike the, uh, the conventional trains, uh, because uh, some people uh, raise this question, how how you can take the passengers mm. in and out yes. uh, from 30 seconds because mm. in, a, in, a, in a particular station so it's stop only 30 it's seconds it's only for 30 seconds okay. right because just like overseas yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's it's common it's common in all over the country mm -hmm. uh, all, all over the world mm -hmm. so 30 seconds is more than enough if you have the sufficient uh, door space mm. and the platform di there's no difference the level difference between the train and the platform so it's it's more than enough 30 seconds is more than enough uh, uh, in addition, so we have starting from the parking, if you take, mm -hmm. we have the park and ride facilities uh, as far as possible in, in uh, the first couple of stations like uh, Malabe, uh, Pitugala, Talahena. So mm -hmm. we will have the park and ride facilities uh, for the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the trains are air conditioned. Okay. And the beauty is uh, it's safe mm -hmm. and reliable. So mm -hmm. once you get into the, uh, the train from Pitugala, you know for sure that at what time you can get down uh, in the destination that you a fixed export. time. Yeah. What about the pricing structure for the ticket? Yeah, um, that would be a completely different from the yeah. conventional correct, train. Correct. So, actually, it's a loan, but we should realize that uh, it is not for free, hmm. right? So we have to pay back the loan. Yeah. So we have to survive financially, survive ourselves uh, as far as we can. True. So for that, uh, we should see the financial viability. Uh, at least to recover the o and m cost mm -hmm. from the ticket because mm -hmm. the the main revenue is coming from uh, the train services uh, tickets mm -hmm. and uh, other advertising and other related uh, marketing things so uh, we uh, studied uh, at what price compared to the bus fare we can reach the uh, the break even point mm -hmm. of at least recovering the o and m cost so okay. we realize that uh, when we take the bus fare, mm -hmm. so we cannot function at a profit, yes. right?
So when you take 1.2 times, mm -hmm. still it is not. Mm. So uh, about one year back, we realized that when it comes to 2.3 times, mm. it is uh, uh, feasible. So in simple terms, mm. ticket price will be less than 100 rupees mm. okay. for a passenger starting from Pittugula to Colombo Fort. Okay. So in between, depending on the distance that you travel, it will uh, proportionately reduce. Okay, that's not bad actually, because of the depending on the service that it provides, I yeah. think that's where it can like uh, that's a good price. Yeah, yeah, because the total system is uh, air conditioned, mm. so you have the uh, elevators and escalators to climb to the, uh, mm. uh, the uh, platform. Platforms. At the same time. Uh, <coughs> Since it is governed by not only the Sri Lankan regulations on disability access, we have to follow the JICA guidelines, mm -hmm. which is very advanced and okay. strict. So uh, the concept they call uh, barrier-free access. Mm -hmm. So in all the stations, including the multimodal transport hub, it will be uh, very convenient for the uh, differently able people to use this facility. Oh, what right. if we mention about the target audience like what sort of commuters are we looking at uh, yeah. when it comes to uh, the LRC yeah. system actually uh, in the study we have realized in this particular corridor the majority of the vehicles are uh, light vehicles small cars mm. uh, three wheelers and uh, vans and pickups so we should try our best to uh, attract them. the attract mm -hmm. the people who use the uh, the light vehicles who are coming to the office, because you, we know that the last mile is very important. Even if we uh, provide the transportation up to the multimodal hub, mm -hmm. if they have to walk or if they have to use another bus for na the next mile, so it is it is not that attractive. So we will try our best to have to attract the people. So thereby we try to have some shuttle services. Mm -hmm. around the stations uh, starting from Malabe mm -hmm. to attract more people who use the uh, light vehicles to their for their day-to-day uh, -day traveling. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. And it's a, it's a good point for all you commuters who are traveling. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you can leave your vehicle behind and let the other people in Colombo do the driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And uh, how about the, now when it comes to uh, now this, uh, is there a way that you can pay electronically to this or? Yeah, you, okay. can, you can use the smart card. Smart card. Yeah, so it will be actually integrated uh, uh, with other services, like because uh, we, uh, from our ministry, the Ministry of Megapolis and Western Development, mm -hmm. we have another three lines coming, right? Uh, which will be, uh, this is the card, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so these three lines uh, will be on public-private partnership basis because it is not uh, coming from a donor agency. Yeah. So uh, for the success of the uh, the total system, mm -hmm. we should have the integrated network covering okay. the Kalambu city, yeah. say from uh, people coming from uh, Kadavata, people coming from uh, Morotua. Mm -hmm. So this should be integrated, right? Mm -hmm. So all the people who use this system can use a common card, electronic card uh, for the, these facilities, including the uh, for them to use it in the, the buses. Okay. So it should be integrated. Mm. Yeah. I think in an over a period of time, uh, this can be monitored with your mobile device. That would be for sure. definitely yes. activated for easy yes. access. Mm -hmm. So if you just tuned us in, uh, we are talking about the light railway transit system, uh, which is uh, already signed and we are excited for the project. Uh, it's about 16 uh, stations that we're looking at at some of the prime spots in Colombo. We'll be starting with Colombo, don't worry. We'll be coming to your cities yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we want to see how effective this works uh, in support of all the commuters who are struck in traffic, uh, grumbling, making long faces, not even mm -hmm. talking to their partner partners next to them. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> probably only eating and snacking out. <laughs> uh, but it's a huge financial project where uh, JICA together with the uh, Ministry of Megapolis uh, is involved in a major project of this nature. Yes. Uh, now, uh, also, Ms. Ari, that's when you speak about the traffic. Now, yeah. this corridor you mentioned about traffic. So, uh, usually you see this traffic happening in the peak hours, in the yeah. mornings and the evening. Is there mm. a frequency change of the trains in the mornings and the evenings and the daytime? Yeah, you're correct. Actually, we have taken the train schedule uh, during our study, but maybe we have to change it because once the uh, the system will be commissioned within another four or five years. Mm -hmm. So by that time also the traffic will be changed, exactly. the uh, condition. So uh, during the study, we realized that uh, during the peak hours, we need at least uh, mm, 
train uh, between ev every every three minutes we need a train okay. right so uh, in the first stage we will have trains with uh, four compartments mm -hmm. uh, which can carry around 800 people in in one train okay so during the peak hours we need uh, every three minutes mm -hmm. right so for the operation we need about 18 trains uh, if you if you consider the starting point as the multimodal transport hub uh, there will be uh, 12 trains coming to Bataramulla and will turn back to MMT, MMTH again. Likewise, we have the uh, different schedules for the peak hours mm -hmm. and off peak hours. During the off peak hours, we will have another rapid train like uh, with limited stops. Okay. Right? Uh, so, with that, I will, I will explain you the time duration for the travel. Mm -hmm. So, the normal train from starting from Pitugal at the first station, it will take 32 minutes to reach uh, uh, the multimodal transport hub at Colombo Fort. Mm -hmm. uh, the rapid train, the speed train, uh, which will take only 27 minutes uh, because it, it doesn't need to stop at all the station during the off-peak hours. Okay. Uh, it depends on the passenger demand. One of the areas that uh, brought to my concern would be now financial assistance is also provided and also the support from the ministry yeah. is also involved. Um, but this also creates opportunities for jobs. Correct. Whenever there is a project that has been yeah. initiated, uh, we bring the youth involved, we bring yeah. you know, opportunities as a bridge yeah. for the economy. Yeah. How do you see this? Yeah, actually, uh, we can see uh, uh, in two ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the construction, as well as uh, once it is commissioned. Mm -hmm. So during the construction, you know, uh, uh, the there will be a lot of uh, opportunities for the labors, mm -hmm. as well as the knowledge transfer between the Japanese uh, experts and the Sri Lankans. Like in my project management unit, we have a quite uh, good number of engineers, uh, but we don't have the technology because this is the first project in the country. So since we have already, sell, uh, already uh, completed the procurement process of the consultant, so one, this huge number of like 100, uh, 100 odd uh, Japanese experts coming to help us. Mm. So they will uh, work with us for the next six or seven years uh, because we ha will have the first year this year is the, the design uh, period. That is uh, the design and preparation of tender documents. Okay. After that, the construction supervision, then the defects liability. So during that period, there will be a lot of knowledge transfer uh, between the Japanese experts and the Sri Lankan engineers who will be working with me in my project. Mm. So that is one part. And once we have the construction package, uh, so there will be a lot of, because it's a huge amount, mm. so a lot of contractors, especially the Japanese contractors, will have the joint ventures with Sri Lankan contractors, and there will be many subcontracts. So it's a huge opportunity for the, the, the workers. Mm -hmm. So after that, once the system is commissioned, so we'll have to have uh, uh, O&M company to run this system. Okay. So we have initiated uh, what kind of uh, uh, company that we are going to set up. So it will be a company fully owned by the government, mm -hmm. but it will be financially and administratively autonomous. Okay. So we will try our best to have uh, uh, the correct people, qualified people only in this uh, O&M company. Oh. So in this company, there will be opportunities for around 800 people, oh. starting from the CEO okay. and uh, to the train operator, mm -hmm. uh, the driver mm -hmm. and the mechanics. Uh, likewise, we'll have a job opportunities for about 800. Uh, I should say mm -hmm. uh, the priority on these uh, opportunities will be given to the people who will be affected from the project. Mm -hmm. so living a luxury life can be sometimes a pain when you mm -hmm. have to travel by vehicle. But then just imagine uh, bouncing up on uh, or embarking on a light railway system might uh, kind of change or transform. Uh, it's all about, you know, moving on with new technologies using technical devices and chilling the bill and walking along the metro lines. <laughs> <laughs> A different kind of lifestyle is yeah. probably being enthralled, but mm -hmm. we're excited for the project and we certainly hope that this will be a rapid take on fast things, isn't it? Definitely. And uh, yes, also I would like to ask you as a final question, uh, what's the, uh, when it comes to these projects being uh, commissioned in, in Colombo, so is there a future, is there a future that you see after this well, as the next step of this project as extension? Yeah, actually um, this is a total transformation in the transport sector mm -hmm. as well as the, the way of, of people thinking. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, we know that in isolation we cannot succeed for this project. So, we have to have the network and at the same time we cannot just neglect the very important uh, township mm -hmm. that is the Kaduela. Mm -hmm. So, in this uh, the, the award for the consultancy we have included the next step that is for the feasibility of the extension up to Kaduela. So, next step will be, next stage will be the extension up to Kaduela. We, we do not know for sure that who is going to finance, but uh, we hope, uh, we wish that uh, JICA will give us a concessionary loan for that part as well. So, uh, it will be the next uh, stage uh, extension up to Kaduela. So, mm -hmm. with the extension up to Kaduela, we will have from MMTH to Kaduela and the other three lines connected. So, we will have a very nice network, good network of uh, light rail transit uh, system in the western region. Wow. Okay. Excited for the project, marking a completely new revolution in the transportation industry, uh, the Sri Lanka light railway system. Uh, this is what we're talking about. Thank you very much to the project director, Mr. Chamindari Dasa, for joining us on our show and also detailing us on all the insights and all about the project. Mm. If you want to find out more details, you can log on to their website and uh, check out for